Good day, and we'd like to welcome you once again to that of the 1611 King James Bible Study with Brother Tim Beatty. Uh, before we even get into the lesson or anything like that, we'd love for you to be, uh, join us in prayer with a young lady. Uh, used to be her pastor in one of the churches. Called me this morning, gave me the earliest text. Her son, his name's Rick. Uh, here about four months ago, had to undergo a open heart surgery. Well, uh, yesterday or the day before one, that surgery they did, uh, began to leak again. Uh, this coming Friday, he's got to go back in and the hospital and have a emergency surgery performed again. Once again, on that of his heart. So, uh, Sister uh, Francis called me this morning, desiring me to reach out there and touch as many people as I knew uh, that know that of the the Word of God or, or the prayer to be able to get a hold of God in the prayer line. And, uh, I urge each and every one of you to take time. He's going to have his operation on Friday. Uh, Sister Kenner's going down, I believe, uh, Thursday, uh, tomorrow, or it may be early uh, Friday morning. But uh, I desire you in prayer, helping me bind together and praying for this uh, mother, that of a child. Uh, and I'll, I'll say this much, you won't find any uh, godlier person than what she is. Faithful, true to that of God. So let's do remember her in prayer this week. Uh, we're going to kindly discuss and go over a little bit of study that I don't like to study on. I don't like to discuss, but there were several people here uh, several months ago, four or five months ago, that uh, wanted me to do a study on this if I would. Uh, they didn't uh, really understand a lot about it. They wanted to know stuff about it and the topic or the subject, rather, is on that of suicide. What does the Word of God actually say uh, concerning that of suicide? And uh, uh, suicide, uh, the question was asked, is it a sin? Well, yeah, it is a sin. Uh, the Bible teaches us those knowing to do good and to do it not, to them it is sin. And we also find that uh, suicide is a sin, and what uh, uh, we find out about it, uh, first of all, uh, suicide is that of a very grievous sin. Uh, it hurts the that of the heart of God. Not only does it hurt the heart of God, uh, but for those loved ones <clears throat> of that of the deceased, the one that has killed himself selfishly, uh, they will go through life with a wrenching hurt uh, and a, a bother. Uh, and usually for the most part, they take that hurt to the grave with them. Uh, the pain of losing that uh, of a loved one who takes that of his own life uh, is not very easily healed. Uh, and often it never is fully healed until we ourselves one day get to heaven. Uh, suicide is that to a loved one or to family members uh, that's all involved that will impact one's life for the rest of their life to know that a loved one has taken their own life. The Bible says in one of the commandments that was given, of that of God to that of Moses, he said, Thou shalt not, uh, shalt not kill. Uh, on the end of the book of Exodus, it reads kind of like this, Thou shalt do no murder. Uh, what is murder? What is deliberate killing? Uh, to murder someone is to lie in wait. To lie in wait. You wait on a certain person to come by. You've watched them. You know this is the area they travel. And uh, you're just waiting for them to come by. So you can have the opportunity to uh, end that of their life. That's murder. Uh, to kill someone. Now, uh, if you just up and deliberately, you plan this out. Just like murder. You plan it out. You decide how you're going to do it. When you're going to do it. Uh, it's a planned out process. Uh, and you are literally making preparations to take a life, even though it, it, it may not be someone else. Even though it's your life, it's still a life. 
uh, we have no right whatsoever to take that of our life or another life unless, unless it is someone that's coming against our home and our family. We have every right in the world. We've got every right in the world to defend ourselves. But we don't have no right by that of God to take that of our own life. Now, I want each and every one of you to watch this video thoroughly. Because if you just watch some of it, you're going to get lost on the end. And probably go away thinking one thing when there's more to it than what you're thinking. So uh, it won't be a very long video. I just wanted to do this on uh, behalf of those that uh, wanted me to do it. I took time. I've been praying about this thing. And I have now... But I feel being given given liberty by God to do this. But I want you to understand something. Uh, there's always a way out. Don't ever forget that. There's always a way out through and by that of the hand of God and His grace. In the book of Acts, the first chapter, we read about a man that was numbered amongst that of uh, the chosen, the twelve in which Christ chose. In Acts chapter 1 verse 15 it says, In those days, Peter stood up in the midst of the disciples and said the number of the names together were about a hundred and twenty. Men and brethren, this scripture must need be fulfilled which the Holy Ghost by the mouth of David spake before concerning Judas, which was guilty, uh, which was God to them that took Jesus. For he was numbered with us and obtain part of this ministry. Now this man purchased a field with the reward of iniquity. And falling headlong, he burst asunder in the mist, and all his bowels gushed out. And it is known unto all that dwelleth in Jerusalem, insomuch as the field that is called in the proper tongue Amagam, that is to say, a field of blood. For it is written in the book of Psalms, Let another, let his bishopry be desolate, and let no man dwell therein, and his bishopry let another take. <clears throat> now that's referring to Judas Iscariot whenever he betrayed Jesus in that of the garden. He led the soldiers to where they was. He was the one in which kept the money. He was the treasury of the twelve in which Christ picked. And he kept the money. Uh, but money, he had a problem with money. He, he was greedy in one way. And uh, seeing that he could make money off of betraying that of the Son of God, uh, he sold him out and took a down payment of 30 pieces of silver. And the Bible said after everything was said and done and him realizing what he had done, he had went and cast back uh, that which he had purchased uh, for the portrayal of that of Christ, but uh, went on out and uh, hanged himself uh, and killed and took that of his own life. Uh, now, they are, uh, I believe, uh, if I ain't mistaken, if somebody else knows where any more are, you feel free to uh, write me. I've never read no words in the Word of God, for they was not but four, really. Uh, most scholars had five in there, but I don't believe one of them was actually committing suicide, and I'll explain my reasons why just in a minute. Uh, but the, most of them, uh, as we see, the four most definitely did commit suicide. Uh, Saul and his armor barrier, you can read about in 1 Samuel 31 and 16. Also, uh, uh, when you read about this, after losing uh, his sons and the troops in battle, uh, and he saw himself uh, uh, being alone there, uh, and was uh, assigned by that of his armor barrier to end his life. Uh, then Saul's servant, after ending, after Saul had taken his life, his armor barrier also took his life. Uh, and like I say in First Samuel uh, 31 and 6, three, uh, chapter 31, verses 3 through 16. And uh, then you have uh, Athel or Athel in 2 Samuel 17 and uh, 23, 
uh, how he disgraced and rejected that of Absalom. Uh, and Apophreth, uh, Frail, went home. Uh, and there is where he put his affairs in order. And then he went out and hanged himself. In 2 Samuel 17, 23, took his own life uh, because of betraying uh, <clears throat> that of uh, Absalom. Uh, and then in 2 Kings, you have uh, Zimra. Uh, rather than to be taken prisoner, uh, Zimri set the, uh, uh, sent the king's palace uh, on fire and died in that of the flames. Uh, he set fire to the own palace and was willing to die in the fire, in the flames, than to, rather to be taken prisoner. <clears throat> and then, of course, Judas Iscariot, which we read about in Acts. I also read about in Matthew 27 and 5, where the betrayal took place. Uh, but Judas Iscariot, betraying that of the, the Son of God. Uh, no doubt. Uh, his betrayal is what led the guards to that of Christ where he was taken into custody and uh, a few days later he was tried uh, the next day and uh, found guilty of uh, being the son, only begotten son of God, really what he is guilty of being. Uh, but they found him guilty in saying that he was blaspheming, which he wasn't. Uh, and uh, because of what Judas had realized what he had done. Uh, he could no longer take the pressure, him being numbered amongst the twelve, being around them, being there to see what they'd done, and was with them throughout the, a lot of the journeys and saw a lot of the working of that, of the miracles of Christ. Uh, it was just too much for, for him, and he went out and killed himself. He hung himself. And a lot of people think that uh, in Judges 16, 29 through 31, there was a man by the name of that of uh, Samson. And they had uh, taken, and uh, by cutting Samson's hair off, and some of you have read the story, uh, he, Samson, decided uh, or thought that all of his strength come from his hair when it came from that of God Almighty. And they took and put him down in the dungeon to grind their wheat mills and all of this in order to make their a flower, whatever else they was making, but uh, while in the dungeon, they had plucked his eyes out, and he was blinded. Well, later on, they had brought him out uh, of the dungeon, and they had changed him between, uh, was probably the most strongest man in that of the Bible that you'll read about, uh, besides that of maybe uh, uh, Goliath, and uh but as far as being a man of God, Samson was probably the most strongest that you'll ever read about. And in uh, that of Judges, chapter 16, along about verses 29, 31. But the story, you can pick it up in the first chapter of the book of Judges, in, uh, uh, chapter 16. Uh, we see that what Samson really did, he was willing to sacrifice his life in order to destroy a multitude of that of the enemies. And whenever they had chained him between the two pillars on the porch of that of the Colosseum, uh, he began to mock and cry out and talk to the Philistines and say all matter of things. And they began to gather around uh, where they could hear exactly everything that he was saying. And whenever a great multitude had assembled theirself into that of that palace, uh, Samson began to call upon God and ask God to give him the strength uh, one more time uh, to do what he was fixing to do. And in his mind, no doubt, he was wanting to destroy that of the Philistines, uh, to kill them, to do away with that of a great en enemy that's always been a, that had always been a, a spur in the side of that of Israel. And God granted that to him. And he began to pull with all his might against the pillars and the palace began to come crashing down. Uh, killed thousands of the enemies, that of the Philistine people. Killed thousands upon thousands of them. So I don't believe Samson in no wise committed suicide. Uh, what he did uh, was 
take control of his last final act that God allowed him to do, and that was to put the enemy and under his feet that Israel would no longer be bothered the way they was with that of the Philistines. Now, I don't believe in no wise that uh, uh, Samson commit suicide. I just don't believe that these others. Yes, I did. Uh, but let's just kind of look and see what the Word of God kind of says according to Scripture about that of suicide. Paul makes a statement in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, 16 and 17. It says, Know ye not that ye are the temple of God, uh, uh, and that the Spirit uh uh, of God dwelleth in you. We are the temple of God. Each and every one that was lost and undone without God, uh, once they began to be convicted of that of God, give their life to that of the Lord, we become that of the temple of the living God. And we're to be Christ like. We're to walk like Him, talk like Him, and act like Him, and uh, go about this world trying to uh, search out and to seek out to be a help to the brother and sister, or whatever that help may be. Don't you ever turn your back on a brother and sister. I don't care what you have to sacrifice in this life. If they need you, you get to them. Uh, don't you put yourself before uh, that of a brother and sister because if they need you, uh, they need you. And you never know what may turn out or what might happen if you decide not to go uh, there to be a help or to just be a shoulder to lean on or whatever that person may need. Uh, you be willing to sacrifice whatever you got to sacrifice in this life. I don't care if it's your family. I don't care if it what it is. If they call upon you and they really need you, you find a way to get to them. And I'm sure you, I assure you, uh, you won't have to go through life, and you won't have to have a chance going through life uh, wishing you had got to them. Uh, whether you're lost or saved, uh, my friend, uh, God created this body according to Genesis. Uh, in chapter 2, he created, or 3, he created this, or 2, uh, body in his own image. He said, let us make man in our own image, uh, in the image of that of God. And, uh, we find that God created that of the life of man, and God, and only God, has the right to take that of the life of man. The Bible said that we are appointed once to die, and then after this to judgment. And that death <clears throat> that will one day come upon us, we each and every one have a t appointed time, appointed place, and appointed <clears throat> day, and even that of appointed year, when God will call us all, each and every one, out of this world one day at a while, whether it be one by one or all, or all that remains, we be called up in the rapture. Only He has a right to take that of a life. Uh, in Ecclesians, uh, Astes, I believe it is, and seventeen. No, in seven and seventeen it says, uh, "Be much, uh, be not much wicked, uh, neither be foolish. Uh, why shouldst thou die uh, before thy time? Uh, who gives us a right to die before the time that is appointed unto us to leave this world? Uh, no one does. Uh, only God has that right to do that." Uh, I want to say this, they may be on a cage and out there where you might have a loved one. And uh, they might not have been aware of what they are doing. Now, I want to say this, I've helped funerals on uh, suicides. I've helped several suicide funerals in my time. And uh, they might have been heavily medicated, was not aware, really aware in their mind what they was really doing. Uh, the Bible teaches us that we're only accountable for the things that we know and the things that we are aware of. And you take somebody that was heavily medicated and uh, the doctors might have had them on one medicine and then uh, go back to the doctor. He wrote another prescription for them and them not knowing they was taking both prescriptions together. Uh, and it caused them to do things that they would have never done uh, if they would have been in the right mind. Uh, by no wise did they plan out to take their own life. It just happened some way, uh, not fully aware of what they was doing, uh, maybe shooting themselves or whatever. I have a dear, 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 precious friend uh, of mine and where his dad, I was their pastor, uh, had cancer, had gotten cancer, and uh, one of the worst types you can get as far as where it was. It's a tremendous lot of pain and 
a lot of uh, pain medications has to be used uh, when you get that cancer. Well, the doctor that he was seeing had him on one medicine. He ever so often, week or so, he'd have to go back, and then the doctor would change the medicine and put him on another, but never did tell him to stop taking the other. He was an elderly man. Uh, told him you, you never told him you couldn't take them together, but because he did not know and was taking these medications together. Uh, then he come to the state, <clears throat> and two days before he committed suicide, I had called and talked to him, uh, and he thought I was his son. Kept calling me by my name, and he knew me very well, and uh, rededicated his life to the Lord uh, while I was at Fredoni uh, Church, and uh, served God faithfully, was willing to do whatever, and got his son, even going to church there with him, and uh, his boy called me that morning and told me what had happened and uh, I knew uh, this elderly person had not been uh, who he should have been for nearly a week. I'd spoke with him off, went down to his house the Friday before that he had done this <clears throat> and went down the house talking to him and he even then was calling me Rick and uh, I'd called his son was talking to him about it, and he said, well, he's going to take him back to the doctor next Tuesday. Well, next Tuesday never come. He was in his bedroom, and uh, back whenever he had his right mind, he always kept a gun right there next to his bed in his dresser, and he was in there fiddling around and trying to mumble around his boy, trying to get him breakfast. In a few minutes, he heard the gun shot go off, and uh, he had shot himself actually uh, right here around the chest area, some way, belly area, and, uh, kind of as an upward angle and uh, it killed him but he was not aware of what he's doing so they are certain situations uh, if you plan your suicide out yes you're guilty of it but if you, this happens in a way that you're not aware of or a loved one's not aware of because of medications mental issues uh, that drove them deep into some type of uh, depression uh, they can't be accountable for the actions they take that they're not aware of uh, we find the psalmist David said in uh, Psalms 34, I believe it is, and his summer's long around, start about 15th verse and go down to about 20. A uh, summer's around in there that David uh, made this statement. He said, The righteous cry, uh, and the Lord heareth and delivereth. He said he delivered them out of all the troubles. The righteous cry, and the Lord delivereth him them out of all their troubles. Uh, so there's no need for any child of God to ever have to get to the point to think that they've got to just end their life. Uh, we've got to help there. There's no reason any lost person ought to get to the point where they figure they just got to end their life whenever there's a way of an escape through and by that of our Lord and Savior. It's their decision whether or not they take that way out. Uh, through by uh, through that of Christ, or whether they take the way out uh, by that of taking that of our own, their own life, uh, we find that Paul's writing said in sixteen or chapter six rather, verse nineteen. Uh, I think it's nineteen and twenty to be completely sure about that. It says, "Know ye not that you are the temple of a living God?" Uh, and that's what we are. Uh, that of a child of God is the temple of the living God. Uh, of that of in which the Holy Ghost resides in, uh, which you have got, and uh, ye are not your own, or bought with a price. Uh, we're no longer our own, a child of God. It's not no longer our own. Uh, we belong to God. Uh, Jeremiah said, For I know the thoughts <clears throat> that I think toward you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil. Uh, God is never thinking anything evil of us. He said to get. He said that uh, He is here uh, uh, to give us uh, an expected end, uh, but it should be on His time when that expected end is. It's not for us to make that decision. Uh, like we said earlier, those knowing to do good and to do it not, to them it is sin. Murder or taking that of one's own life is sin. And if you die in your sins, my friend, that's the way you'll face God one day after a while. Uh, Psalmist David writes that how long shall I take counsel 
uh, and David was no doubt a man, probably thought often about suicide because of the situations and the things that he got his own self into and how much he pulled and drawed away from God at one point. But uh, he said, uh, how long shall I take counsel? Uh, having sorrow in my heart daily. Uh, no doubt he broke the heart of God. He did. Uh, but he said, he, and he even said he did, he had sorrow in his heart daily. How long shall my enemy be, uh, be exalted over me? Uh, only God knew that, but there came a time when God delivered David out of all of his troubles. Even after everything that David had did, committed adultery and uh, caused that of uh, murder, uh, had uh, uh, that of Bathsheba's hub husband, Uriah the Hittite, had him move plumb up to the front of the battlefield and know him. By doing that, all chances and all odds are he'd be killed. Done it deliberately in order to uh, get have that man's life taken. Uh, and I, I'm here to tell you that uh, David had his faults. David had his troubles. But yet God said, or David said, that he, is yet, he has lived me out of all my troubles, and he will us. Uh, I don't care if you're lost or saved. If uh, you're out there and you think that uh, nobody loves you, nobody cares, uh, I'm going to tell you something. There's people out there that care, and there's people out there that love you. Uh, but there's none of us that care and love you as much as Jesus did. He died for you. He took and allowed and laid his life down freely so we wouldn't have to be taking ours. He made a way of an escape through and by him, but it's up to us whether or not we want to take that way out. Uh, but if we take the other way out of that of taking our own lives, then that's the way we'll face God. One day out of a while, and the Bible said that there'll be no sin in the end of that of the kingdom of heaven. It's going to be a pure place. Uh, Paul states in his writings in uh, the 10th chapter, I believe it is, or the 12th chapter, of that of Corinthians, Paul begins to make a, a statement there. And uh, Paul said that he said unto me, my grace is sufficient. My grace is sufficient for thee. For my strength, is what Paul's saying, is made perfect in weakness uh, through and by that of Christ. It's made perfect through Christ. Uh, most gladly, therefore, I would rather glory in my firmities than uh, uh, glory in my firmities that the power of God or the power of Christ may rest uh, upon me. Uh, Paul went through a lot of trials and troubles and tribulations and uh, it was on every side, uh, many times being thrown in prison, many times being beaten, many times he was shipwrecked, twice I believe. Uh, he was uh, cursed, he was uh, uh, stoned at one point, nigh unto death, that's the point in which he went, uh, his spirit or he was carried up into that of the third part of heaven whenever he was nigh unto death because of a stoning. Uh, and no doubt Paul, uh, he seeked the Lord th thrice, three different times on a certain situation in his life. But God says, my grace is sufficient for thee. And it's for sufficient for the, us today. It's for the, sufficient for that of a lost person if they would just come uh, uh, through and by that of the grace of God's conviction that may convict their heart and call upon that of God. And uh, By doing so, God said, in no wise shall I cast you out. Uh, so God, or Christ, has made a way of an escape in every area of our life if we will just take it and heed to it. But if we don't, then uh, our judgment shall lie within that of our own life, uh, how we live it and how we leave here. And I hope and pray that we leave here in and by and through that of the blood of Jesus Christ, having his blood applied to our life, us dying out to a world and being resurrected into that of a new creature likened unto that of Christ. and uh, Suicide is a horrible thing. It really is. and uh, There's a lot of people I know uh, that's left this world by this acts of means. And I'm going to tell you right now, for the most part of them, I don't got a lot of hope at all uh, because of the fruits they bear, the lives they live. Uh, there's just no hope there. and uh, but they are a few that I can have a little hope in and have hope in that they made it to be without a Lord and Savior because of the situation or the condition they were in, not realizing really what they were doing. Uh, and I'm going to say this to you. There's no trouble. There's no trial. There's nothing out there. And this whole world, I don't care if the whole world's coming down on you, 
There's nothing worth taking your own life over and taking a chance to miss out on that of heaven. Uh, we need to be aware of this thing because hell is still a real and very real place. It's never been moved. One day out of a while it will be moved. It will be delivered up, the Bible said, and it will be cast into that of a uh, lake of fire burning brimstone and lake of fire which burneth forever. Uh, so we need to be mindful of these things and don't never think that they ain't people out there cares for you. They are. And they care deeply uh, about your situations. Paul said in Romans, says, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Uh, the greatest way of an escape is through and by that of salvation, once the convicting power of God begins to come upon that of one's soul. Uh, so there's no need and no reason whatsoever any person and that of the right mind, and they take time to plan out how they're going to take their life and this and that, there's no reason to go through that process whenever God gives you that uh, way of an escape. In John 12, 25, he said, For he, loveth, uh, or for he that loveth uh, his life shall lose it, and he that hateth his life uh, in this world shall keep it unto eternity, eternal. Uh, shall keep it unto life eternal. Uh, and that's in John 12, 25, I believe it is. And uh, other words, if you love your life in this world more than you love uh, that of somebody else or whatever, chances are one of these days whenever everything comes against the very thing you love the most, uh, you'll be in a state of mind that before I let uh, the one I love the most go through all this ridicule and hatred and all this stuff, I'll I'll just take him out of here. That's no way to think. That's no way to think. Submit your heart unto God and, and let him do a work into that of your life. Uh, the Psalmist David, and it's either 137 or 127. I can't remember exactly which one it is, but it's 137.3 or 127.3. Uh, but the Psalmist David said, Lo, little children, or lo, children, uh, are inheritance of the Lord. Uh, God was the one and the reason we're here today. He's the very reason. And he also said that we are the fruits of the womb in his reward. We're the fruits of his womb through a spiritual birth in his reward. Lo, little children, our inheritance of the Lord. We all are here because of God. Each and every one of us, whether you be saved or lost, you're here because of the will of God. Uh, it was the will of God that you be brought into this world. And one day it'll be the will of God that we be taken out of this world. But it all depends on how we face God when we leave this world. It all depends. Deuteronomy in chapter 30 and that of Moses is writing. The Bible says, if any man defile the temple. And he's talking about the temple of God. If any man follows the temple of God, him shall God destroy. For the temple of God is holy. Which temple are you? If any man shall defile it. And my friend, taking one's own life is most certainly defiling that temple because you have done away with something that God can never now use. You've done away with something that God could never again convict the heart of. Uh, you've done away with that of the most precious thing that God has, and that's his creation, which he created in that of his own image. Uh, Paul said in uh, 1 Corinthians 3.17, he said, If any man defile the temple of God, he says this, Him shall God destroy, defiling it. For the temple of God is holy. Which temple are you? And we read that a while ago, I believe, or quoted it. Uh, which temple are you? If you're not the temple of God, my friend, your life was still created by that of God. And only God still today really has the only right whatsoever to take that life. A lot of people ask me, you believe in capital punishment? I believe in putting them in there, lock them up, and let God do whatever God will do. If their life be taken by that of another ungodly person, then so be it. The Bible says, vengeance is mine, and I shall repay, thus saith the Lord. Back in the old days, yes, no doubt, there was capital punishment, and it was proved and sealed by that of Moses in the Mosaic Law. God didn't do it. God said, Thou shalt not kill, thou shalt commit no murder. 
And if you're getting ready to uh, take someone's life because they've took another life or whatever, then you're making plans and preparations uh, to deliberately kill that person. Uh, let God's vengeance work it out, and he'll take care of it. I don't care what the problem is. I want to close with one verse, and it's in John 10, 28. It said, said, I give unto you eternal life. That's God, the Christ, speaking to the disciples there. He said, I give unto you eternal life, and they shall never perish. Neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. <clears throat> he says, neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. My friend, I want to say this. Uh, don't make a bad mistake by taking yourself out of the will of God and out of His hand by taking that of your own life. Uh, you are precious in the sight of God. And even though I might be a, be a minister and a minister of 27 years, you may be out there in a very depressed state. But I can honestly say you've probably been a better person in your lifetime than what I was in my earlier lifetime, teenage years and uh, the first part of my young adult years. You far, far, probably, no doubt, a far, far, far much better person than I could ever hope to have been. Uh, but I've got good news for you. I care. There's others out there cares. God, Christ himself, has made a way of an escape from this terrible thoughts that may be running through your mind. God has power to put Satan under your feet if you'd let him. And submit yourself unto God, under that of an almighty God that has power uh, to live, to take up life and has power to lay life down. That's his God-given right. He created us. He made us. He's the only one has got a right to take us out. And that will be on his timetable, not ours. That's his time. Every man. He said, every man. He said it's appointed once to die. He's got an appointment day out there in our future somewhere uh, for this whole body to lay down and the spirit to go back to be wherever uh, it would be at that time. Uh, whether it be in that of a place called hell or a place called heaven. Uh, one day out of a while when we lay this whole body down and our time comes, our appointed time from that of God, uh, then we will reach that of our final judgment and only God has that right to make the final judgment upon that of mankind. Man can't judge man but that of uh, what he, what's in his heart down here. But he, but Christ himself said that we're to judge him by the fruits they bear. And if they're bearing ungodly fruits, then chances are they're an ungodly person. If they're bearing righteous fruits, chances are they're a righteous person. If they're kindly bearing a little rotten and a little righteous, we're all going to make mistakes. We're going to fall short. But chances are, my friend, they're trying and striving with everything they've got to get to heaven and to take their family with them. <clears throat> and I want to say this in closing. I don't care whether you be male or female. In the sight of God, you're important. In the sight of God, you've got a meaning in life. In the sight of God, he loved you enough to bring you into this world and let you also run your course. Whatever course you chose, he's not going to force you to do nothing. That's how much he loves you. But yet, he was able to go a step further and love you even the more. He laid his life down freely that you may have life and have it more abundantly. Uh, because he suffered the most heart-wrenching deaths man could ever imagine. Beat, unrecognizable, hung on the cross, bled and died. Half no doubt of his bones and his sight ribs were exposed because of the cat of nine tails they beat him with. His hair was all plucked off of his body. But yet he was willing to go through that and face that gruesome, gruesome angel of death in order that we may live. He faced it for us where we wouldn't have to at the end of our road. There's nothing you're going through right now, and I don't care how bad it may seem. I don't care how bad it may look. And I don't care how bad you may think it is. Just like David said that he delivered him out of all of his troubles. What he done for one, he'll do for the other. And my friend, taking that of your own life, it's not worth it. Where the tree falleth, that shall it lie. That's the way you'll face God. 
But you're too important in this world to be going around taking your own life. There's too many people cares to put them through that much pain and sorrow. Uh, because if God didn't think you was important enough to be here, he wouldn't have took the time to see to it that you are here. So if you're that important to God, then you know, need to stop and think. Well, if, if I mean that much to the Lord, then uh, by all means, I want to try to do whatever I can in this life to, uh, to please him. Uh, if I'm not yet saved, I want him to save me. I want, I want you to be able to say, and if you're not watching this, you're lost and undone, leave it in the comment section. Don't put your name out there. You just say, preacher, pray for me. I'm lost, I'm undone. And I desire the prayers of you and all of those that watch your video. Pray for me. I need your prayers. One day out of a while, I want to be a child of the King. To be forever in a place called heaven when my journey on this life ends. But if you're a child of God and you've been broken down by the things of this world, the people of this world, or whatever it may be, and you think you've reached your last limit, you think you're on the very end of the rope, and uh, you just want to turn loose. Don't. Instead of turn loose, uh, you find you find your anchor in that of God, and you begin to pull yourself up through and by the grace of God and the help of God, and see if He won't raise you up much further than where you was before you got in the situation you're in, because that's the kind of God we serve. He said He would not suffer us to be tempted above that of our measure. He would not put no more on us than we can bear, and he won't and he never has. Uh, he did not put the problems uh, on me that I have. I put them there myself. Uh, he did not put all the ministry and everything I've had to do for the Lord. He didn't put it there uh, to be something that I couldn't handle. He knows each and every one of us what we can handle. He knows we got to grow, and we'll grow at his speed and his rate, not ours. And if we do that, then regardless of whatever state we find us in. Paul said, regardless of whatever state he found himself in, you know, he knew. He knew that there was a God that would always be there for him when he needed him. All he had to do is cry out, and Paul did. Paul cried out many times unto the Lord. I hope and pray this has been a help to you in some way, somehow. I hope if you've got a loved one out there, and uh, they had been suffering mental, mental challenges, and uh, lived two or three months not even knowing what they was doing, not even knowing half the time who you were, who they were. And, uh, but for some reason, they ended up taking their own life. You have hope that in that, they're, if they was saved and ready to go on to be with the Lord, you have hope that chances are they're with that of the Lord and Savior because we can't be responsible and accountable. Rather, we cannot be recountable. Uh, or accountable for the things that we're not aware of that we do. But if you're out there somewhere and you're premeditating your own death, uh, I beg you to seek God. I beg you to seek God. Leave you leave a comment down here, and whether you're lost or saved, and say, Preacher, you and all of those that watch this video, please pray for me. Please pray for me that God would save me, that God would strengthen me, that God would help me, whatever the situation may be. I'll assure you we'll pray for you and we'll take time to do so. So I hope each and every one of you has enjoyed this. Susan, uh, Richard, uh, uh, Violet, and some of you others that was wanting this video done. I did not ignore you once. I had to do quite a bit of praying about this before I did this. And uh, God has finally given me liberty to do uh, uh, this subject on uh, suicide. So I hope you enjoy it. I wish you to move all your comments over here in the comment sections instead of Gmail, but I understand a lot of people like to be very private, and that's up to you, and you know, but uh, just think about all these others that would also love to hear from you, but each and every one of you watches these, I wish you and uh, I hope you would put a comment in there, whether it was helpful, whether it didn't, uh, if there's something you'd like to listen to, let me know so I can be praying about it. Uh, and see, God does answer prayers. I realize it's been three, four months since they was requiring about this. But, you know, I just can't jump in here and do what I want to do. I've got to have time with God. And I've got to make sure it's something God needs. Uh, I'm not here for myself. I'm here for the Lord. So I hope and pray each and every one of you has a blessed day. Uh, stay safe. And may the blessings of God always be, be found upon each and every one of you. And uh, we pray. You pray for us, you pray, and we'll pray for you. Remember Sister Francis' uh, boy that's going to have that open heart surgery. You keep him in your thoughts and prayers. And 
Until next time, God bless. And may the mercies and the grace and the blessings of God be always found resting upon you and within you.